I am sure the vast majority of my audience will be in full agreement with me when I say that it is time to move on from parsing every little detail about the absolute abject failure of Joe Biden on the debate stage. It was predicted. Everybody has seen this. This has been the primary thing the Republicans have grabbed onto for the last three years to make the case that Donald Trump should be president, but at the very least, Joe Biden should be removed from the office of the president. Now, after having watched hours and hours of debate on this, nobody is actually making the correct observation. Removing Joe Biden from the race and or the White House actually hurts Donald Trump. Because who has he been running against for the last three and a half years? It's biden Omics. It's the failure of Joe Biden in Afghanistan. Every bad thing that has happened since he's been elected has been attached to this guy. If they replace him, all of those talking points go away. Every single one of them. Now you might say, well, they supported this and they supported that. Well, that's not going to rise to the level of responsibility. Getting rid of Biden actually hurts Trump. And if the Democrats really wanted to do this, it seems to me like they would want to do it at the last possible minute so that Mr. Trump and the Republicans wouldn't have any time to formulate a strategy to run against the new opponent. And I think that's what they're doing. See, there's a huge list, a huge laundry list of people that most on the right are like, oh, this person is wrong because of that. This person is wrong because of this other thing. All they need to do, all they really need to do is just keep the right guessing until the convention. And the convention's in August. The election's only a few months after that. And there are two people, one I've talked about already, the second one I haven't, that if they got on a ticket together would present an incredibly difficult problem for Donald Trump, who hasn't, hasn't even named a running mate yet. The one guy who has the inside track on the running mate, J.D. Vance, used to be a never-Trumper. I don't know that a never-Trumper, a former never-Trumper, wants to get on a stage and debate a Democrat right now. Because that would be, especially one that's you know got a little bit of horse scent, so to speak. I'm going to show you who that second person is. This DNC convention in Chicago is going to be a major, major CF, if you know what I mean. This is battlefield of the mind stuff. This is things that um, are beyond the obvious talking point. That the man is beyond the ability to govern, whether he was right, whether he was left, whether he was the other, you know, whatever, it's an issue with age. It's not an issue with policy. You may disagree with his policy, but everybody focuses now on state of mind and age. And that's a huge help for the Democrats. If you'd like to join us, the Florida Maki Patreon channel, where we primarily talk about psychological operations. I know a lot of people are confused right now. It's like, how does this help the Democrats? This issue with Biden, this issue with his health and his state of mind keeps anybody from actually talking about the real issues. Some have tried to come out and say, and Tulsi Gabbard being one of them, and she's being buried, she said, this is not about Biden. We can't get focused on this thing with Biden, but it's the easy thing to get focused on, isn't it? You know, it's the easy thing to do. Say, the guy's just not uh, capable of governing. When the argument should be, even if he was, the way that he wants to govern is the wrong direction. So no matter who they put in, the direction is wrong. That should be the argument. But right now, it's all 25th Amendment, and who's it going to be to replace him, and how would they go about it, and what's going to... It's all about this. It's not about actual policy. If you'd like to join us at the Patreon channel, one US dollar per month, even less if you sign up for an entire year. Perfect day to join. 
Perfect day to join right here at the first of the month. You get a whole month, no having to pay for a partial month. And if you sign up for an entire year, you get a discount and fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. Set at the lowest possible allowable speed bump level just to keep the trolls and sensors away. There's a $5 level as well. Not required. Handful of videos for those guys. God bless every one of you who has signed up for this and is helping me out. It's making a major difference in my life. Wouldn't be here, wouldn't be talking about this. Now, let's get right to it. We talked about Pete Buttigieg and his time in the military, um, his training. Once again, his ideas about the direction of the country, um, not something I agree with. But his ability to articulate well his beliefs and his ideas is something that Donald Trump and the Republicans have not had to deal with. They have had to only deal with Joe Biden barely being able to get out of sentence, barely being able to stay in train of thought. If Donald Trump had to face somebody who you know was young, like 41 years old, like this guy is, it would be tough. It would be a completely different contrast. This guy can think on his, whether you agree with him or not, I don't agree with the man's lifestyle, I don't agree with his politics, but he can think on his feet. He can think on his feet and he can elucidate and communicate rationally and thoughtfully and, and not get tossed off his game in a debate. It would be very, very difficult. Plus, I mentioned it before, I mentioned it before, it's the whole idea of you can't criticize a gay person you can't. Because when it all boils right down to it, somebody's just going to call you a homophobe and it'll stick. And that's all the young people will hear. Young people aren't thinkers, but they're voters. Young people aren't thinkers, they're feelers, but they vote. And they will vote their feelings every time. And when it comes down to a 41-year-old gay man versus a 78-year-old baby boomer, it's not even close. Plus, with this guy having his position on abortion, that that it is, there's going to be a lot of ladies that tell all their conservative friends and their husbands, and oh yeah, to Trump, 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 Trumpity, Trump, Trump, and they're going to wear their red hats and they're going to go in there and they're going to pull the lever for somebody who is pro Roe v. Wade because it's a secret ballot, and then just tell guys what they want to. Guys out there, ever run into a woman who just tells you what you want to hear? This guy will be the avenue for that. Now, who's the other guy? I'm sure a lot of people like eight minutes in. Who's the second person? It's a guy named Andy Bashir. And he's the governor of Kentucky. And this would be another huge um, bring to the ticket because, once again, a governor. This would bring gravitas. This isn't a senator. You know, it's not a state senator like Obama was. Or, you know, Obama's, you know, big Mike friend or whatever you want to call it. Andy Bashir. Andy Bashir actually has some positions that would surprise you. He is actually not for an assault weapons ban. RFK Jr. is. Wait, what? That's right. Look it up. RFK Jr. A lot of people say, oh, I'm going to vote for RFK. I'm going to vote for RFK Jr. I'm going to vote. He's actually for AOC's Green New Deal. And he is also for an assault weapons ban. This guy is not. But there's even a bigger reason this guy would make a very difficult, very, very difficult vice president to debate, especially if Trump picks somebody who is like a never Trumper. Very, very difficult. If you go, if you look into Andy Bashir's history and you know, elections and all this kind of stuff, you have to go down and look at one particular thing on crime. This is from his wiki. Bashir signed an executive order completely restoring the voting rights and right to hold public office of 180,315 Kentuckians who had been convicted of nonviolent felonies. He has restored rights to more felons than any other governor in American history. And what was the other one? Bashir said that a significant driver of incarceration in Kentucky is the drug epidemic and opined that Kentucky must reduce 
the overall size of our incarcerated population. We don't have more criminals. We just put more people in our prisons and jails. Bashir is of the view that possession of cannabis should never result in incarceration. He would like to see medical cannabis legalized on the national level. And Bashir signed an executive order to allow medical marijuana, um, medical cannabis program. He also released during COVID, he released a ton of people from prison. A huge amount of people to uh, relieve the burden on the prison system dealing with COVID. And let me get down here to uh, real quick. Oh, um, sign an executive order to allow name, image, and likeness compensation for college athletes. That's a really good idea, actually. He's pro gambling. Bashir said he would not support an assault weapons ban. He said it would instead support a red flag law like we have here in Florida, authorizing courts to allow police tempor temporarily temporarily confiscate firearms from people who judge deemed a danger to themselves or others. So the, he's got some things that, uh, and plus he's exactly on the left's version of what the right position should be on LGBTQ whatever issues. So he's, you know, he's got all those boxes checked, but he's not um, a bomb thrower. So th this would be, and that's been, and the reason I say that is that that's been the big thing that Donald Trump and the right has grabbed onto and been running against for three and a half years is that everybody, everybody on the left is this hyper, super leftist, um, crazy liberal person. Buttigieg and Bashir are not in this particular case. And they would, and, and do not underestimate, this is Buttigieg, top center, Bashir, uh, bottom row to the right, all the way to the right. Do not underestimate that idea. That if you can take, I mean, and this has been something that the youth in this country has just washed their hands of. They're not going to be involved in the election because it's two boomers. It's two people that are so old, they have absolutely nothing to relate to. And these people grew up in the 50s. Both these guys grew up grew up in the 1950s. Remember Back to the Future? Remember Gen X? These people would have been there as almost, almost adults. You know, waiting, waiting on Marty McFly. That's how long these guys have been around. And one guy, you know, has, has reached the dementia stage, you know, quicker than the other. But they're both boomers. You you introduce into the race. And this was my whole point with DeSantis, but nobody wanted to listen. Nobody wanted to be humble and understand what the right strategy was. Because the Democrats could have done this at any time. You introduce somebody, a millennial, into the race, a serious millennial into the race. And now if the left does it first, it's it's going to change everything because it re they relate to a completely different group of voters right now this right now the election was going to be decided by gen x and boomers a lot of people were going to stay home a lot of people who were younger than gen x and millennials there might have been some millennials for for trump um but the youth the millennials um hispanics they were going to stay home in this in this election. They weren't going to vote. You get somebody young, and I know a lot of people are like Florida Mikey. Don't you know about Big Mike and and Obama? We already had a gay prep, not an openly gay one. No, not an openly and proud and out gay. Absolutely not. We haven't. This is going to be. Uh, Something that I think takes a lot of people by surprise. The massive shift in independence. And even the guy, this is the crazy part, folks. The guy who has the inside line, the inside line to be who Trump nominates for his vice president used to be a vehement never-Trumper who liked to argue with girls on online 
in public. It's just embarrassing. J.D. Vance. So I just want to leave that there. God bless all of you who've joined us at the Patreon channel. Very, very much appreciate it. Um, it is not overstating the case to say that it is uh, vital that we keep it going. Um, a lot of folks over there now. There's hundreds. And I, I know a lot of folks think, if I pay my dollar, what am I really going to get? You could watch videos, and they're 25 and 30 minutes long. You could watch videos for hours and hours and hours on end. Some channels have, you know, six or eight or ten videos over there, maybe 15. The Florida Maki has hundreds. You could go back this year, 23, 22, 21, 2020, 2019, and still watch video after video after video after video after video. Nonstop. For your dollar a month. For your single dollar a month. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. See you guys next time.